Get prepared. Today we're talking to Bagnaria about... Uh, actually, Bagnaria, I, I'm not even sure I have the technical chops to really explain what's going on here, so uh -huh. uh, I might just let you explain what we're looking at. Uh, well, we're in an, ex an experience where every plant is basically uh, procedurally uh, placed by a script. Uh, so uh, the scene that I created in edit mode is barren. There's not a single tree in it, nor uh, any plant on the ground. And the script has up to 20 slots, um, and you can use multiple scripts also, uh, to place like different groups of landscape objects uh, by measuring the landscape, basically. So when you look around, you will notice there's uh, four beacons, like those red big beacons. Yes, I'm uh, floating, uh, floating around right now to check them out. Yeah, and... Uh, wow. what yeah, and what they do, they show you the uh, area that uh, trees can be rest right now, like um, of the one that we're uh, modifying in script. Okay, so Bagnaria, just in case anybody who is, is sort of new mm -hmm. to um, yeah. scripts in general, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you some very basic questions, and um, mm -hmm. uh, I hope hopefully you don't hold that against me. So I'm, no. actu I'm actually, I'm <laughs> actually okay. the, the perfect sort of uh, uh, new, new user uh, here. Um, so mm -hmm. when you say procedurally generated, um, will you explain sort of what that means and, and how procedural generation has an effect on the scene and sort of the memory that the scene takes up? Uh -huh. uh, well, much in the same way as anything you place uh, uh, in a scene in edit mode, uh, like you really, really have to consider how complex uh, objects are you place in a scene. And a good example in this one is like the green tree actually has 40,000 triangles. So you really, really do not want to place too many of that. Um, when the scene loads, it doesn't have any weight because those objects have not been created yet. Uh, so in scripting, there's uh, like uh, like an API that's uh, for cluster resing, and what that allows you, it allows you to take any item out of your inventory and stick it into your script, like have a list uh, to choose anything in your uh, inventory, like in our, our world here, trees and uh, mushrooms and grass patches and other plants. It can be anything, really. And uh, and then uh, the script uh, is then able to generate as many as you like uh, off of that object. Okay, cool. And you don't have to know scripting at all like, because you use that script to do it. It does it for you. And what it does basically, uh, it uh, like so those four pillars are like the area that uh, the script that we can manipulate and shed, uh, like uh, like mark. So like it's a big square. And uh, like I'm just looking at the ground uh, in that area and measure the height and the slope. And you can then say this plant can grow at a specific height and can grow up to a, spe a specific uh, slope angle. For example, the fir trees on the outer rim, they can grow up to 50 degrees, which means they can't really grow on something really steep, but they can grow on anything between zero and, uh, and 45 to 50. And that's really, really useful for that type of plant. Uh, and uh, then there's other things like the mushrooms and the rocks uh, that are very different. Like they're smaller um, and they're growing like uh, typically on hilly areas and they adhere to up to, I think, 25 degrees or something. That's just the configuration in the script. But what they do, they uh, adhere to the slope. It's one of the parameters. So you can tell objects, okay, like when you're on, on a mountain, uh, I need you to to hug the mountain so that it looks natural. Yeah, that's incredible. So anybody can can come in and and use the script, assuming they know how to, to implement it, um, mm -hmm. and have uh, a very natural looking uh, of scene. And, and so, can anybody use the script? Anyone can uh, be in here and try it out. Uh, then there's also free demo version, and like uh, anyone can buy it and use it for as many plans as they. One, like the demo version just always stays uh, in verbose mode, meaning the beacons are always on, and it only has one slot for, uh, for uh, plants instead of 20. Wow, amazing. So mm -hmm. how long did it take you to, uh, to, to develop the script? Uh, what was the process? The script that? was about uh, a week, but like I started, like, so it all happened because I made like a script for, uh, for the penguins we have in the icy canyon. Oh, that's right, yeah. And the penguins are like, uh, like actually go up and down uh, based on the ground they find and uh, like I didn't actually release it but like they also see when it slopes down and then they hop and slide down the hill oh right and for that script I actually had to already do a matrix cast so that I know what's ahead of the penguin 
very much uh, like uh, the updates that are coming for the non-player characters. So it was basically uh, in preparation of being able to do that, having like uh, players in the scene that uh, adhere to the height and change uh, their motion based on it. Just like we can now jump and when you fall, you have a different animation. Uh, oh, great. That's that's awesome. And, and so and when you're making yeah. a script, what's what sort of, you know, what sort of programming knowledge do you need uh, to do something like that? Like, uh, can, a, can a newbie come into Sansar and, and make something like that? Or does that require some sort of uh, extra I, process? I really cannot speak to that uh, because I wouldn't be objective. I've been coding since I'm 12. And so uh, I'm, uh, I started computer science. I worked for Apple and Mac's computer and did some really fancy stuff. I think it's quite elegant and uh, adequate, uh, but it definitely will have a learning curve because it's C-sharp, and C-sharp is, uh, is a full-fledged programming language. It's a, a very uh, powerful one, uh, and I think it's quite intuitive and easy to use comparatively to other languages, but... Uh, that pretty much like is like uh, if you've ever done any uh, advanced scripting, uh, like it's similar, but like it goes a little bit beyond uh, what you can do, let's say with uh, with Second Life LSL scripting. I don't think it's necessarily harder, but really everyone just has to uh, have a look. There's uh, like the best way to get into it is to look at the examples. So uh, in the Sansa install folder, there's a directory with all the. Uh, script examples that the lab provides mm -hmm. and if you feel intimidated when you look at that uh, and it, it's all like uh, like really really hard to understand then maybe it's not for you uh, but the system that the lab has implemented is actually quite elegant because you can use a lot of scripts uh, that have uh, like a simple script interface even this landscape browser is enabled for that because you can chain them together so let's say you have like a uh, 10 razors in the scene. You can make sure that number one runs, uh, then number two. And the way I did that is, uh, like, when a razor is done, it sends out an incomplete event. And the reason that I had to chain them is you don't want to run 10 razor objects at the same time because uh, they're uh, going to run out of memory if you do too fast. Sure, and you, you crash the scene or something. Yeah, you crash the scene. And so you have to chain them up. I mean, you can be uh, trying to crash a scene with a reza, uh, but <laughs> yeah. at the same time, I try to be as smart about it as possible. But if you do 10 and you run them all at once, like, so the, the start command, if you set it to order, like literally the word order, then it starts from the very beginning. But if you make it any other word, uh, then you can chain them together that way. Wow. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's say um, y you obviously were trying to solve for a problem. You you created this for a reason. Now, what was what was the original problem you were trying to solve, and and, and how did you sort of stumble upon it? Well, uh, you know, like I always have an eye on Unity and other uh, scene creation uh, tools, uh, and I love uh, doing landscapes. And when you actually do large landscapes, you will run into uh, the fact that it's extremely time consuming to uh, place hundreds of objects. I mean, we have a thousand plants in the scene and they're being placed within a few seconds, like 40 seconds uh, total or something like that. So it's an extreme time saver when you're into building your own landscapes. Uh, and because you have so many criteria uh, to specify, like where can a plant grow uh, versus uh, where is it uh, like not able to grow, just like it would uh, be uh, the case in nature. Um, it's such an enormous time saver. Well, yeah, l let me speak to it just mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. from like a, more of a layman's that's not a coach. <laughs> like, um, well, Matthew, before you start yeah. talking, can you can you tell us uh, what your role is here so people know who you are for their, that are watching for the first time? Well, uh, Bignari and I are, are partners. We, we make up full spectrum. So, uh, I mean, we're pretty much working together all the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is like a, a problem that we, you know, we, we could spend weeks just laying trees down and placing them perfectly, making sure they're not floating in the air and, you know, everything about that between all the little pieces of grass and you, you know, you have to make sure none of that stuff, uh, is floating or turned the wrong way or, uh, and the script just does everything perfectly and places it so it's you know perfectly placed in the scene and repeatable and just, too it's such a time saver that's what it's all about really yeah, it's really about saving time, time. time and it looks natural looks more natural than i could ever do placing them by hand because i would never get that kind of random uh, pattern you know placing it by hand
that has quite a few parameters. So you, you decide on uh, the height that the plant can grow, the slant that it's allowed to uh, to grow on, if it adheres to the slant. Uh, you also s tell it how far should it stick in the ground. Let's say that's important for a tree that grows on a slope. If you have it too high up in the air, the root will stick out. But if you do like a mushroom and you uh, put it too high, then like you will see the whole bottom of the mushroom. So like you want to make that like maybe a centimeter uh, in the ground, but a tree is typically half a meter in the ground because if a fir tree grows on a 45 degree, you would otherwise see the bottom half of it. Yeah, that's right. And that would look su super unnatural. So, um, so okay, so that's great. Um, I, I think anybody can come in here and try this out, and then uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned where they could get it. So um, uh, that's super cool. Uh, I always like to, to – whenever I see something that amazes me, I always want to come, you know, mm -hmm. check it out and, and uh, figure out how people are making it, especially because I don't really know how to build anything myself. Yeah, and the first version didn't have the live, uh, like, uh, shed uh, commands. Uh, I made that when I saw, uh, like, a Disney use uh, the script, and she had to do all those round trips that take 10 minutes for her river experience. And so now she can actually go in, put, like, uh, the script on verbose, which is like your test mode where you're uh, setting it up, and you can just communicate with it in, in chat. Tell it, okay, like, let's try this group uh, at this height with a slope, adhering, not adhering, just play around with it, uh, changing the random seats so you get a different placement pattern. And then you uh, just tell it, hey, show your config, and it will list uh, the exact uh, settings for your script in edit mode. Wow, awesome. And you can do all of this in, in the chat. Okay. Um, so you can do all that via chat. That's awesome. All mm -hmm. right. So let's say um, uh, we're going to get a little more general now. So uh, we want to mm -hmm. pick your your brain uh, uh, as far as your expertise. Let's say you're a, a you somebody comes to you and they're a new builder in Sansar and they don't really know mm -hmm. how to do programming. What are like the first five things you would suggest any new creator um, to think about when they're building a landscape? Um, I'm putting well you on the spot, so <laughs> <laughs> you can always change this later. Well, course. it depends on the skill level, right? Like, uh, I think so, so. When uh, when we construct this landscape, like, uh, let's think about the elements you need. You need some ground texture, mm -hmm. like the one we're standing on. Then I made like little round patches that are like basically just randomized and stick out a little bit so that the ground doesn't look flat everywhere. Right. That's and it also cool. gives the plants a different reason to grow in different spots because I can measure where they're colliding and stuff like that. Uh, so that's the second thing you want to place. And I did it with the very same texture as the ground texture so that they blend nicely. And then I also made mountains and world creator. But you could also buy mountains. And I will put these uh, mountains in the store with a, a splat map. Uh, a splat map is basically uh, allowing you to assign other textures to it. For example, if you decided it shouldn't have a snow cap, you just choose a rocky texture, and then like, instead of the snow cap in that area, it would have a repeating texture that makes that up. And so if you're skilled enough or you have the tools to make your own mountains or your whole landscape, you can do that. But oftentimes you can also just uh, put it together with store-bought items and just customize them. But the quality of your landscape will mostly depend on the quality of the textures and assets you're using in it. So that would be my main focus if I want to create a great landscape. And uh, Bignari, I think, does plan on releasing some landscape pieces so you can put yeah. together your own. Yeah, the, this mountain will be in the store for uh, for a little, uh, and like the patches also. Oh, by, uh, by the way, I forgot one thing that's super important in the use of the script. You have to be able to block areas. For example, like here by the sign, there won't be any plant growing on it. And what you do for that, you just uh, create like a... Uh, blocker objects and shoot them up at the same uh, height as the scan height is set to. So like in this scene, it's at 45 meters. So all the ray casts to measure the ground start at 45 meters. And uh, then in turn, uh, when you put an object at that spot, like I, I created like a big disc that's transparent and just shot it up to 45 meters height. And that way you, you can kind of control, there's a house, I don't want any plan to go there or I want to place them by hand. But again, in this experience, uh, the only thing that's placed is the sign. There's no other object in the scene when you're in edit mode at all. In, Entity asks a, an interesting question mm -hmm. in uh, yeah. chat. Um, what if we want alien plants? What if we want something that's not so natural looking? Is it possible? Well, uh, the Reza is uh, like completely uh, like uh, pulling the plants out of your inventory. So like ah. if you buy the Reza, it doesn't have any plants in it. Oh, cool. Good. Good to know. Like those two trees, I think are both free on the store. Uh, no, no, actually the green one is uh, by Alex Bader. Uh, 
it's really nice but it's also really big mm -hmm. um and you have to just totally watch out that you buy efficient assets as well because like the fir tree for example right now we have i think uh, 350 of them wow. and that's a lot of trees right yeah. if you have one that has 50,000 triangles it will totally blow up your scene so these are 3,000 very nicely optimized trees and and if something is worth it, then uh, like the green tree, you only place like two or three of them, you're fine. But if you were to place uh, like a hundred of those green trees here, you would f uh, find that causes lag right away. Wow, yeah, yeah, no, not at, not at all. Mm -hmm. And that's the danger of a script like this. It can uh, totally in no time overwhelm your scene if you're not smart about it. Okay, so... I mean, it will look pretty, but it will get really <laughs> slow. <laughs> so uh, I know that... Um, Again, when we have so new creators come in, a lot of times they enjoy mm -hmm. uh, learning from from you all, uh, from mm -hmm. creators that currently exist in Sansar, and, and including a lot of people here in this in this circle. Um, but what what sort of external sources would you recommend for people who want to learn how to build landscapes? And do you watch any specific YouTube channels? Do you have documentation that you read? Uh, yeah, yeah, I watch YouTube's all the time, especially when I wake up in the middle of the night, but like I, I absorb at least like 10 tutorials a week. Uh, and most of uh, the things for landscaping you will learn from uh, from tutorials or that are actually not Sansa tutorials, but like maybe made for Unreal and Unity, because they're very similar. And assets that you can use for uh, those two are usually work in Sansa as well. Now, one of the things I think would be really mm -hmm. great, Bagnaria, and, and Medgu, mm -hmm. of course, uh, since this is uh, both of your experience, um, is after the video, if you can send me um, five of your favorite YouTube videos about, about this specific topic, I would love to create like a little playlist um, to attach to this for, for future users to see. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know, uh, so everybody listening, I, you know, hopefully I'll be able to attach that to um, the YouTube description or, or, or we can attach it to something else. Uh, yeah. And in general, like, uh, are, yeah. Well, did you bring up the, there are two programs. You know the programs better than mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, so, so I have two Land. main sources for, for landscape. Uh, and I think the most superior uh, for landscape is actually uh, a, Swiss uh, yeah, a Swedish company called uh, Quixel. So the website is quixel.se for Sweden. And uh, they, like, the ground texture here and all the textures on the mountains uh, and some of the plants, like the dandelions and red mushrooms, they're, uh, like, uh, assets from Quixel that are licensed for it. Uh, but I can't sell those. Uh, I think I actually could sell those, but I won't sell those because I'm always very, very careful with copyright stuff. And uh, But you can do the same. You can uh, get a Quixel account, and they have... Uh, LOD optimized, very high quality landscape scans. So for landscapers that really want to do a seriously good job, uh, I think there's nothing that compares to it. Uh, then of course I also use Substance Painter, but that I would use when I'm uh, putting a plan together and I have to create uh, custom textures for it. I use it more for things like like uh, like the makeup I'm wearing, where you project like different uh, details on your skin. Uh, for landscapes. Uh, but what Another about uh, huge what about yes. like world world creator and uh, what's the other one? Yeah, world creator. And, uh, there's two uh, landscape generator uh, applications. One is uh, World Machine, and uh, the other one is World Creator. I highly recommend uh, World Creator over World Machine because World Machine is kind of outdated. They both do essentially the same thing, but a World Creator is much faster and much more modern. It's not cheap, it's like around $200 to get a full license, but it's totally fun to, to use it. But the same thing as, uh, as applying as uh, does with uh, placing too many plants, it's very, very easy to create a landscape that's overwhelming, that's overwhelming the engine. Because like Sansa uh, like, uh, doesn't really like super large objects. And when you're creating like uh, with a landscape generator, typically you start like with like a 4 by 4 kilometer piece or at least uh, 4,096 uh, pixels. And if you do the math on 4,000 by 4,000, which I won't do in my head right now, it's quite a bit of uh, triangles that that creates just in no time. Right. That's the thing. It's always about optimization. And then your landscape is always the surface. Uh, you know, you have all the collisions happening. You have to run across that landscape. So then uh, you have a really big uh, uh, collision item uh, being your landscape. Yeah, they, it's they, almost better to do it in sections and pieces mm -hmm. like this. This one is done. 
and the engine calculates uh, large pieces differently from smaller pieces. So if you do like uh, like a large landscape piece, like the Icy Canyon has a really large piece. And that's uh, 100,000 trying in my editor, but like, uh, but Santa reports like 1.1 million or something like that. And clearly that's uh, a lot of weight on the scene because you do have a collision uh, for it so that you can walk on it, just like uh, Maddie was mentioning. So what I did here to not overwhelm the scene, I actually just created a mountain that is about like, I think um, not quite 20,000 trying Um And I have, I think seven or eight mountains in here. And that's much, much uh, better for, for this engine. Like it performs much better with that. So that's like a really a nice little trick to do uh, instead of uh, having these large pieces. This gives you a lot right. more flexibility too because you can just right. turn a mountain, you can build a little valley or like a path between two mountains quite easily. Yeah, and you have more control. Yeah. Much, much easier to, to deal with that than to try to do your whole landscape because the scale is really hard to get yeah. and the texture repetition is also really hard to make uh, work perfectly. Wow, so that that's an incredible amount of work. So um, one mm -hmm. of the things, uh, again, I, with the mind towards uh, mm -hmm. creators that are sort of new in Sansar or people that are going to be joining in the future, uh, one of one of the things that I've noticed just through this conversation and, and in sort of my my time in the community is that there's an incredible amount of collaboration going on. Mm -hmm. So how would you, uh, s seeing as how you, you've both come together to, to, to form sort of a, a, a collaborative uh, team, and I know that you work with other uh, other creators. What sort of things would you recommend to a new creator um, to ask for help? Because I know that can be intimidating for some people. Yeah, I, I mean, never be shy about asking for help for one, right? Uh, join Discord so that you uh, you can listen in to uh, conversations that are already going on. Uh, because a lot of, uh, like the building channel and the scripting channel are both a really good resource to learn more. I mean, they get pretty deep, so... Uh, if you're coming from the coding side, for example, then uh, that might be for you. If you're more of a, let's say, uh, a person who places objects, uh, your approach will be different. And uh, in a way, that's also uh, why Medu and I work really well together, because uh, we have quite a bit of overlapping skills, but like Medu's focus is much more on rigging and animation, and mine is much more on textures and, uh, and coding. While we both model a lot and have great ideas and put experiences together, but like uh, that way we have complementing skills. So like it's nice to find someone who actually uh, you can bounce things off, and then like really uh, like it increases your productivity so much. It's really nice. Yeah, I love that. That's great. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I think everybody should be out there trying to find somebody to work with. It's uh, yeah. I think it makes for again complementing skills. And our number one rule is it has to be fun. We are not in this to make money. I mean, we we, uh, uh, we want to make some money at some point just so that we can do nothing else. But that's really our only motivation. Uh, story of my life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it's a nice segue because I was about to ask, you know, what's, you know, it's nice to know all the details. And, I'm, and I hope people are able to to um, learn learn from this uh the sort of explanation you're giving, but in a, in a more general sense, uh, indeed, mm -hmm. I, I'd love to know like what your inspiration is to build and what you and what you get out of that, and uh, and sort of like what your what your shared philosophy beyond the fun of it. Uh, well, it's the fun of it, really. I have no other explanation. It's it's a little bit like playing God, like but in a very friendly and beautiful way, like where you have your imagination and you can transform it into anything that you thought of and i think that's incredibly uh, appealing to me and doing it in a virtual world uh, like sansa uh, has this added benefit that you can actually be in uh, your creation together and that to me is super highly motivating yeah i think for both of us it's it's mm -hmm. about creating you know it's like you just love to create you know uh, you know every object you uh, you're working on, you know, that's like the most important thing to you. And then when you're done, you, you move on to an, a brand new uh, adventure and a new item or creature or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's or amazing. experience. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The love of it is really the core of it. And I think we uh, most most uh, of the early uh, adopters of uh, Sansa are creators that have kind of this gene in them where they just love to create experiences. So uh, Entity always um, mm -hmm. always has uh, some, some really interesting input, and he just dropped mm -hmm. the prices for uh, World Creator uh, in, into the chat. So with that yeah. in mind, what w so let's say that you have somebody who doesn't have 
um, you know, maybe maybe the sort of flexible the flexibility to go out and buy a new program. What would mm-hmm. a new creator be able to do, and what should they focus on with the tools available in Zanzar? Okay, so uh, like a lot of accounts or like s- uh, resources like Quixel even have free uh, assets that you can buy and try. And uh, so that's one uh, way to get them. Uh, you can also just uh, look in the Sansa store for free items. Sometimes you can just uh, retexture something you find in the store. Uh, another really good uh, resource uh, uh, that's been used all over Sansa is like that the Sansa Studio uh, base experience, uh, especially the Highlands one, is foundation for like uh, at least 10% of all experiences here because you have access to uh, all the assets in it. Yep. Can even Scurry it? Canyon. Scurry Canyon is half Highlands build, so like objects, like for the canyon walls. Oh, amazing. Okay. You so wouldn't know it, but yeah. We uh, have. Like, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, continue. Oh, it's it's all right. Uh, uh, like uh, so, there are a lot of free resources, but I I I think it's just being smart about combining the right things and really not uh, like I mean. The quality of a texture is so important too. I mean, the ground here looks like it's uh, it's not just the flat piece of like some uh, boring uh, like uh, like repeating texture, right? Uh, and uh, it's it's in your choices a lot. It's really not uh, about money that much. And maybe you sure. know someone who can make you a mountain. And I mean, our mountains will be out there for a hundred cents at all. So that's definitely if that's uh, breaking your bank, then I think you're doing something wrong altogether in life. <laughs> You know, uh, one uh, tool I think uh, at this point is indispensable, or at least mo- or at least uh, one of a two, uh, would be Substance Painter, and it's super cheap. Uh, Substance Painter, uh, I think I pay twenty dollars a month, and I get the whole Substance Painter package, um, and that's like the cheapest thing I pay for, and it's uh, a super powerful tool. So like su- Substance Painter, or uh, a lot of people use three D Coat. Mm-hmm. Which is like, I think it's free. Wow. And Blender is free, right? Like um, uh, one oh, of, yeah. uh, well, the, of uh, it's Blender. really high quality uh, 3D modeling and it doesn't cost you a dime. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I think that uh, those, those are some pretty good resources. And, and we'll make sure mm-hmm. to, to link those resources as well. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't know if we can do that. Anyways, we'll give it a shot. Um, all right, so I think that's that's mm-hmm. uh, all I all the questions I have. I wanted to thank oh. thank you for for <laughs> taking the time to make this uh, in general, but also to to sort of uh, spend your time here with us and, and take us on a little. Uh, and I encourage you just uh, go into chat and uh, just enter something like forward slash zero twenty. All right, I'll do it. Forward slash zero twenty. Uh, so so forward no no forward slash max sorry uh, zero twenty. I'll go look at the sign real quick. All yeah, right. yeah it, uh, it will see. Oh, wow. You just changed the landscape. <laughs> Amazing. Somebody else did that. I wish I could take credit for it. Um, <laughs> okay. This is you great. You can do it. <laughs> you too can come in. And anybody can come in here and do this, right? This is a demo that's open. And and you can get the uh, Reza image uh, uh, trigger volume already set up uh, with the beacons and all uh, and put it in your landscape and try it out for one slot. Wow. Amazing. You know, we were thinking too. Uh, like mushrooms, uh, what if you <laughs> could use this to place mushrooms so that people could come in and pick mushrooms? So oh. they will always be in a different spot all oh, the we, time. Every oh time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we will. We will make yeah, an yeah. Easter egg version of this one, uh, which will just come pre-assembled with uh, uh, with uh, like you just said. Okay, I want uh, ten Easter eggs in my experience, and they can be uh, like uh, like uh, at this height and uh, this slope. And then you just click a button. You don't even know where your Easter eggs are going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's that amazing. So, <laughs> so that will be like a, a free version that we make for Easter, which I think is next weekend, right? So. Oh my goodness! I didn't even realize. You don't even pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't even know when holidays come up because our heads are down. You know. Yeah. Well, you We're think, always working. You'd think with my avatar that I'd be well aware of Easter, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <it's>, um, <laughs> Uh, all right. So, um, does anybody have any questions? I'm looking on Twitch. Oh, uh, we've got a very important question from Twitch. I hope you're ready for this. And, and I'm sorry sure. that I have to put you on the spot again because this is a hard one. Um, Corpus C asks, uh, "Do you like pineapple on pizza?" <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Oh no! Oh, this is the I worst. I love pineapple on pizza. <laughs> uh, uh, it doesn't belong. Uh, it does. Wow. Galileo, I'm wow. Galileo, I 
have a question for you. Uh, would you rather have crushed or cubed ice? This is a very important question. Oh, crushed, yeah. Yes! There we go! Oh, crushed, yes. there, there's more surface area to cool your drink with crushed exactly. ice. Exactly, and you can chew on it, and it's yummy. Oh my gosh. You'd totally get in trouble in the Atlanta office. <laughs> oh, no, I guess I'm, I'm banned from going to Atlanta. Yeah, pretty much. I'm bringing a pineapple pizza. All right, so this is a this is a perfect segue. Uh, we're gonna s we're gonna segue from um, the uh, the sort of formal uh, interview to uh, <laughs> this is the community Just meetup now. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody if anybody has strong opinions about food, uh, now is your time. Uh, any any unpopular opinions? Macaroni and ketchup. Ooh, love yeah. it, <laughs> love I it. Too. Oh yeah. Yes, it's good. Oh, uh, oh, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Before we do this, oh, AMR. My <laughs> stomach can take okay. this. A a a right? Oh, AMR had a question that I missed. Okay, so AMR asks, um, <laughs> so I can create landscape at runtime. When I go back to edit mode, I will find those script generated trees and plants, so I can make manual changes and tuning. Question mark. It's a workflow uh, question. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, it has a parameter that's called seed, uh, and uh, the seed parameter uh, actually like. Uh, uh, Evo AV, uh, like uh, inspired by Gimbal, actually, uh, like uh, pointed that out. That's one way to uh, to do random, but like predictably so. Uh, and what that means, like you are in the experience right now, you can actually have it print out the uh, configuration you just made, and you get the full parameter string for all of the slots. And uh, you, when you copy that back into your script in edit mode, it will recreate the landscape exactly the same way every time. So well, it's exactly random. the same way. It might not look exactly the no, same. No, no, no. It will look close, so really? No, 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 no. Really? It looks identical because I do all the random parameters seeded. Oh, so okay. like uh, the, the rotation, the slope angle calculations, the randomization. It's all going to be using the same random seeds so that it's completely predictable what it will do. I haven't had time to play with it enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when when you do uh, like uh, the command for that is seed, right? Like so, you can just keep the number of trees the same. But if you do forward slash seed, uh, then uh, the slot for the um, uh, trees is zero, uh, and then like you give it a fantasy number, like let's say a five-digit number, it will place the uh, trees but in a different pattern. But that pattern will always be the same when you use the same seed. So that's the magic in that. Ooh. AMR, was that, was that what you wanted? Before we continue talking about uh, ketchup and macaroni, where did AMR go? Yeah, good question, right? Wow, we answered his question and he, and he dipped out on us. <laughs> oh, there he is, he's right there, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, and so I think that question is being answered in chat now. Uh, so we can go back to uh, ketchup, and mac pizza? ketchup and macaroni <laughs> being the, the best dish of all oh, time. Oh, no, no, just no. No. <laughs> You're banned. Wow. All right. Oh, I got banned immediately. Okay. Um uh Bagnaria, you are in uh you live in Germany. What's a so No, no, I don't live in Germany. Oh, I, I live just close to the to, uh, to San Francisco actually. Well, I just made that up and I lie about everything. So, <laughs> Bagnaria does not live in Germany. Um <laughs> never mind. All right. I'm from so there. That's <laughs> what it is. Uh yeah. Well, uh, well, I'm sorry about that. Now I feel bad. Now no I feel problem. Like I've, I've <laughs> oh, it's no. a reasonable assumption. <laughs> it's probably only what a few miles from you. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, I'm I'm just like 25 miles from the lab. Well, if I start seeing random trees pop up around me, I'll know I'll know exactly <laughs> what's going on. Who who has placed them? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Majeka has a question in the chat. Um, uh, well, I don't know if he's talking to AMR or, or y'all. So anyway, uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, you can, they can figure that out. Um, okay. What other what other uh, hot takes do we have about food here? I let someone else come up with something. Honey <laughs> mustard and ketchup with chicken fingers. They're good. What did you say? Honey mustard and chicken fingers with chicken. Oh, honey fine. mustard and ketchup okay, with chicken tenders. With. It's well, really the good. Honey mustard part. Oh, oh no. both of them. No, no. <laughs> I'm hungry. I, I haven't had lunch yet. Can you tell? Yes. <laughs> you sound like you eat anything. <laughs> I would pretty much. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that was a judgment. That was judgy. I, I literally 
looked at a, uh, a pack right of now, uh, shipping peanuts and was like, hmm, that sounds good. <laughs> Bagnaria is like, look, oh, Majeka is asking Bagnaria. Okay, so we're getting back. This is weird bouncing <laughs> <Okay>. between uh, <laughs> this sort of this conversation and the other one. All right, Majeka, right. thanks for, for ruining our fun and asking a, a, a serious question. Um, okay, so um, Majeka uh-huh. asks, uh, I'm just kidding, Majeka. Aww. Uh, wow, wow, it's fine. Uh, Majeka asks, so you have uh, you have to have the objects beforehand you want to use, or is there or or, or do there follow some standard ones with the script? Um, no, no, there's anything that you can plasterize, which is basically so the only rule is uh, it cannot have a collision. Except if it has might, a collision, it would uh, stack them. I mean, I we could might make. Hmm? We, might we might have. We might make one that's packed with assets. Just did some trees, uh, some scary yeah, trees. Yeah, we might make one that's, that, that yeah, that are all, like, super efficient. Yeah. yeah. So we might. Okay. We, we don't and have you can do it, too. You can get the script, yeah, stuff it, so and much. resell it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you have good objects. But you basically uh, pick 20 objects out of your inventory. It doesn't come with any... Uh, I put the beacons in the store, so you uh, can yeah. use the beacons. Uh, yeah. Uh, for the uh, corner markers, uh, and the demo one is already pre-installed with us, so they never go away. Uh, but uh, like in essence, it's really entirely up it to you. Might be something to do though. If we mm-hmm. get bored one day, we should sit mm-hmm. down and make some assets for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Way, I mean, we know they're efficient, you know. And it's or really like, <laughs> yeah, Thanks I had fun making it. It's, it's a pet peeve of mine. Like, oh, I didn't make it for. Like uh, like any specific reason, I just got into it and <laughs> really had a blast with it. <laughs> Thanks for the answer. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the question, Majeka. I know I was giving you trouble, but you know it was all <laughs> a joke. Yeah. Uh, Entity's getting hungry, so uh, I think that Al said that uh, you could probably make a giant pizza with the script with toppings that are random. Is that mm-hmm. true? Totally true. You can. Uh, I mean. Uh, the objects you have can be uh, dynamic too, right? So if you do Easter eggs, you can make them so that they're clickable, for example. Or oh, like yeah. you can uh, rest a pile of rocks um, and then it just falls or down. Animated things. Oh, wow. Animated. Yeah, uh, so there's no limitation in that. But uh, the, the one thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to put like trees with collisions uh, down because then the next tree uh, like will be randomized in a proximity and then actually will be put on top of that other tree and I can't prevent that if it has collisions. Uh, and Entity has a, has a fairly uh, interesting game uh, that he has created in chat that I'm not going to repeat out loud. But if anybody wants to make the dog plopping game, uh, I'm sure that's, that's possible. Um, I do, <laughs> I do want to take this time to say that if, if you are planning on making a giant pizza scene um, – and you put pineapples in your scene that you're immediately kicked off the platform. No. And I am so <laughs> mad about yep, it. Yep, I that will is give true. you a giant hug if you put the pineapples on there. You can't hug them if they're not yeah. on Sims wow. anymore. Well, That's right. <laughs> we need pineapple well, maybe we pizza. place a band in right. the scene, and when someone uses it, <laughs> <laughs> pineapple pieces will fall down. <laughs> well, that, well uh, ideally, if, you, if the objects that are placed are grabbable, you could pick the pineapples off your pizza. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is like when I come into virtual reality, into our virtual world, that's exactly what I want to do is, is pick things off of my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're going for realism here. You know. <laughs> that's right. I think, I think somebody should make a fun uh. experience that's all food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's entirely made of food. Well, Ravioli <laughs> has started that by making giant pickle worlds. And so uh, mm-hmm. we just need to, to sort of iterate on that. Wasn't there a turkey bounce house at one point? A turkey bounce that house? That is a turkey bounce house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we have, we've just made saying, it. we just need to, to make some variety and get a bounce house full of like all kinds of delicious beastie stuff while we're you know in the business of making Harley hungry. Might as well yeah. come all out. <laughs> just a little bit. Well, uh, I wonder what would be the most bouncy food. I think that. Mm, well, wouldn't you just sink into Jello? Depends on d- depends on your density. Way. Yeah. Uh, Jello. I mean, if you're bouncing on it, probably Jello. But uh, when you drop it, Jello doesn't really bounce, unfortunately. <laughs> it's splashes. <laughs> yeah, it kind of shatters as much as mm. a food can shatter. <laughs> splashes. This might be a good uh, <laughs> description for it. 
fucking gross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it reminds me of The Office when, when Jim would hide uh, Dwight Stapler in the Jello and that kind of thing. Yes. Mm. Entity is real. This is Entity is dancing, but there's no music, which I, I, I have to say uh, is, is somewhat disturbing. Unusually. Because <laughs> yeah. He uh, just looks happy. And he does look pretty happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> campfire would be great. Can we res mm-hmm. a campfire? Uh, you can put anything in uh, the resource, and you can of course put like objects in the scene, uh, like houses, and like uh, for this one we will definitely have deer running around. Oh, deer! Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I, 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 you noticed that we created that, um, mm-hmm. that follower script, uh, and I think that that's getting more. Um, I think there's some evolution happening with with the way that things move, and I know in scary waters you have uh, the crabs that move, right? Yeah. And uh, the limitation we had so far that we weren't able to, um, like, I mean, we do it with the penguins, uh, but so far you could only uh, adjust the rotation um, maybe twice in a second without getting into major trouble. And what the new non-player script will do, uh, which is, I think, in the next release, uh, it will allow you to do it uh, at any time interval, and so you can constantly rotate, which allows you to have a non-player character following you, and doing like all uh, the rotation movement that it needs for that. Yeah, Matthew, you made. Th- were you the one who made the the elephant? I believe it was you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the elephant was in Scary Waters too, but uh, we need. We're we, we're actually going to make an experience just for the elephant. Yeah, there's a but sanctuary coming up, uh, and it will use this yeah. razor. <laughs> yeah, but oh. that's experience number four on our list. Experiences yet to make. Oh, yeah. that that's that's a really that's a fun question. So, what's coming up? Give from us, a, us? Yeah, from you. <laughs> oh, the next oh. one. I don't know. Uh, like we're building four experiences. <laughs> like one is a game. It's uh-huh. called Finding Nelda. It starts at an airport with a plane crash. That's oh. all I can tell. It's a little bit like an escape room kind of uh, experience. Um, then we have like a like a, a wax museum coming up. Oh. Then uh, that'll be different. That yeah. will be totally different. Then we are expanding this scene at some point when we have all those uh, bears and deer that can run around. Then and we have the we'll elephant sanctuary. The icy canyon too. Yeah, yeah, the icy canyon will be a lot more fun. Uh, as soon as we get vehicle scripts, we have vehicles ready. So we already have jet skis made, and uh, like as soon as we can uh, s- uh, properly sit on vehicles and steer them, uh, like uh, you will have jet skis and scary waters, things like <laughs> that. Very awesome. Moving NPCs like we have a boss man at Scurrylandia that's going to get a whole new fight set of animations for that, and at Scurry Canyon. So uh, those two big boss man fights are going to get uh, much more exciting now. And and the shooting games will be so much more fun because you can now have your uh, enemies run around, right? If you are in the oh canyon, God, for example, NPCs right now they're on a constant, uh, like, uh, like almost like animatronics that are on steel rails. Uh, but like with uh, the ability to do the n- non-player character stuff, as limited as it might be, like it, uh, for us, it's a totally lot enabling. Too. <laughs> yeah, with stuff chasing you. Because you just uh, just like you place trees in the scene, and uh, and again that was actually kind of the the reason that I made it because like I already work on the penguins, and so I already had the code that measures the ground, this land, and then I said, oh, it would be cool to use that for the landscape placement because it will be such a huge time saver. Well, I sort of uh, inadvertently uh, created a, a sort of a full spectrum week here uh, in, <laughs> in uh, the, for the community <laughs> hangouts because uh, for game time on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Uh, uh, this is a nice segue into that. We're actually going to Scurry Waters to play Bubble Mania, isn't that right? Mm-hmm. That's correct. And I think it's probably the most mm-hmm. fun game we've made so far. Yeah. But certainly, like, when you are in a group that uh, plays uh, Bubble Mania, everyone seems to have a blast. It's, uh, it's non-violent because you just trap people in the bubble, and everyone really seems to uh, enjoy it a lot. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I'm really excited to, to get, like, I, I really want, I, I missed the whole Hover Derby uh, time mm. uh, at Sandstar because I wasn't here yet. So I'm really excited to, to try to find a game that we can, like, turn into a league or a tournament or something mm-hmm. um, beyond the sort of uh, debate between Pineapple Pizza and, and 
<laughs> and good pizza. Um, so uh, with that being said, uh, just as a reminder to everybody before uh, I, I turn – oh, Lacey is approaching me, probably to, conf <laughs> probably to confront me about pineapple pizza. Yeah. Uh, all right. Oops. <laughs> wow, so wow. I'm running into everyone. Um, as a reminder uh, uh, to everybody watching um, – we are doing a sort of a, a test on, on how community meetups are, are run. And so if anybody has anything that they want to show off or if you want to nominate anybody to uh, to have a community meetup, uh, well, we'll be doing something like this. We'll, we'll look at what you've built. We'll ask why you've built it and what your inspiration was. We'll ask for tips to help other people. Um, all you have to do is reach out to, to Galileo on Discord or even in game. And... Um, we can make that happen. So this is this is something I'd like to I'd like to try to get as many people featured as possible. So um, yeah, that's that's a thing that I have to say and that I want you all to know. And then uh, I think we are I think we are done. We've got we've got fifteen minutes, so we can uh, continue to hang out if uh, mm -hmm. if anybody if anybody else has any questions for you all or. Um, and uh, uh, the only thing I can point out, like Disney already made uh, like her beach experience. I forgot what it's called. Like something, like someone may look that up. But all the palm tree placement there is done with this. And Bluebell started using it and has a scene coming up that's uh, also populated with a landscape uh, script. So uh, that will be fun to explore. What's what's Disney's script called? Or what's her um, event called? Or experience, I can't think. What's your experience? Is it the top of the world one? You may have lost audio. Oh. Uh, can you hear me now? Can ev can anybody hear me? I, I mean, I can hear you. I don't know. Okay. I can hear you. Med Medhu, do you know where'd Medhu go? He's gone. Um. All right. Well, I was trying to find. Hmm. Uh, I was trying to find out where um, Disney's uh, experience was, so we could go check out what the um, Rezzer has done in a real life experience. I believe, I believe it's the top of the world experience. So maybe, wait, is that it, Space Sailor? Do you know? Oh, you're not sure. Okay. Um, she's got two, or we could go to the to the river. But I think she placed all of those. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the one that's really randomly placed is uh, is the uh, beach one. She has two beach ones. One's called the Top of the World, and the other one's called a Piece of Paradise. Piece of Paradise. Okay, let's go there. Let's actually just go mm -hmm. see what that looks like. Um, yeah, it's nice for her to get some traffic. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what that's about here. All right, I'm going to drop a portal, and then we can all go. Yeah, let's go. Pretty. Around you, actually, see that it's not populated yet, right? Like we see the plants are happening just now. Oh, that's right. What? Because the uh, uh, experience wasn't uh, like uh, installed um, before, so there will be more trees. <laughs> Amazing! This is beautiful. Well, good job, Disney Huntress, who's not here, and uh, <laughs> this is this is pretty amazing. It's, re it's really fun to watch the trees get placed. Yeah. yeah. I think there's more coming, actually, uh, because I remember there being here. Is. <laughs> we will see. Wow, this but is yeah, Lana. Wait, let's go check out the aviary. Yes. <laughs> I hear Lana Del Rey playing. I am down. Oh, I turned off the uh, the uh, audio experience, uh, the experience audio, so I can't hear anything. Oh yeah, there's more trees coming there. <laughs> oh, there they are. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow, she placed a lot. Wow, this is so <laughs> cool. Yeah, did you see the trees get placed? Yes. Can you imagine doing that by hand? <laughs> no. Disney told me that she had placed um, in her river experience, um, mm -hmm. which was one of the first experiences I ever saw when I came. Wow, are you inside of me? Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I was like, I was like, what is happening to my avatar? Uh, well, look, Bagnaria, that's uh, not the purpose of this uh, uh, meetup. Um, we are looking around the aviary. Um, let's go mm. upstairs. Let's see if we can see any more trees being placed looking down. Oh. Wow. Amazing. It's cool to see this happen. Is that, that is our water? Is it? Is it? Just 
<laughs> Slightly different with their water again, too. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is amazing. Good job, Disney. We'll have to. Somebody will have to let you know that we came. All right, everybody. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a little sign-off on Twitch. So I'm going to zoom back and uh, everybody come near me and, and look out into the water. Look the other way. Oops, there we go. And uh, everybody do a little wave emote. Wave emote. And say goodbye, Twitch. Bye, Bye, Twitch. I got away. There we go. Bye. All right.